Y'all know I'm color purple up through and through. Me and me and you must never part, my kida. Me and you must have. Where is that in church? Where is that in church? In church, we done come up with the world. It's, it's a new season. How many seasons do you have? It ain't supposed to come every four weeks. That's not a new season. That's the need for an appointment with somebody. Lord, let me get this together. Y'all tearing up my lesson. At 9 o'clock, let me also encourage you, you need to get last week's sermon at 12. 12 o'clock was nothing like 9 o'clock. It was amazing. Okay, it was good. So I want you to get that. All right, third skill. Come on, we got to hurry. Third skill that you need for any relationship to be successful. Oh, God, we really got to stop the madness on this. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God, we need to stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. We got to stop the madness because we have become uh, people who take and don't give. Let me tell you something. If you're going to have a winning basketball team, you got to have some folks that show reciprocity or are willing to make assists. Thank you all for putting that up there. Assist. Reciprocity. What's an assist? An assist is when a, somebody passes the teammate a ball, gives them the opportunity to score immediately or with just one dribble. It's, and, and, and watch this. They always talk about it the most when the person with the ball has the, they got a shot. It ain't no problem. They can pull up and they dish it right quick. And somebody else just finger rolls that thing in. And they call that an assist. Watch that. Because they, they don't demand that they get all the points and the applause oh lord you know what i don't know i may have to cut on my other mic see let me tell you something you don't want you don't want to be in a relationship and watch this you won't be able to be in one long that does not reciprocate y'all listen nobody can stay intense in giving when nobody's giving back to them Okay. I don't care how great a player you can have the Michael Jordan or whoever you like Kobe Bryant uh, LeBron you can have whoever you love if they never pass the ball they will lose and if you try to have a, a life where you don't ever give to anybody you don't sacrifice and let somebody else shine. If the only time somebody applauds, you got to stick your face in the picture. I can't, you can't even hardly see everybody. Every picture you got, all they see is your head, your teeth, your lips, and they see about this much. I look like a moon of another person because you always some. Oh, baby, reciprocity. If you give, I get, I get, I give. You cannot take it all. You got to be with, nudge your neighbor and say, you need to give it up sometime. And she ain't talking about sex y'all ain't say nothing your voices went down huh they didn't hear all that oh I need to say that again you can't I done forgot what I said now that upset me so bad you got to be willing to give it up sometime and I ain't talking about sex you got to be willing to let somebody else shine Reciprocity means that I'm willing, I'm willing to push somebody else. Real relationship is, oh, I don't have time to do the, the, the thing. Do it, do it. Okay, I messed with Reverend Randy because he came in my office cutting up this morning. Okay, Doc, get up. You and uh, Malouz, y'all stand up. Y'all so cute, sexy. Go on, stand up. All right, so come over here, Malouz. You come on this side. So I'm going to show y'all how, how, now this is a little quick dating class before we get to next week, before midweek study, right? Okay, you first get ready to start looking at you, just kind of glimpse at each other and then look away. Yeah, they, see, he grinning now. He's still grinning. <laughs> Go ahead, my Lucy. Watch this. So they first just kind of look and then they look away. Then they go ahead and look at each other and just go and turn. That's when they decide, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I do like her. That's when he starts saying, hey, man, you, what you think? What you think? You think? Yeah, yeah. So watch it. Then they walk closer together. Come on. Hurry up, make your steps, Reverend Randy. Go make your steps. I told you, he told. I ain't say touch. 
I ain't mad at you, Doc. Handle your business. I, okay, but try. Just hold off for a minute. Service be out in a little while. Just face each other, please. So now you're going together. And so then you get married and everything. He's getting married. And he says, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Don't kiss right now. And so, it's, uh, so, but watch this. If they stay like that, that's not good. Because you know what happens if they stare at each other too long? She's going to say, you know, one side of your mustache is longer than the other side. <laughs> and he's going to say, yeah, that, that is true. But I didn't ever notice that light spot on the part of your eye. That's, what happened? Did perm stay too? What is that? So what they have to do is they grab each other and they face a direction. Face out that way. Face that way. That's ultimately how you have to live. You move from just staring at each other to now beginning to move together in the same direction. Do you see that? Watch this now. Now, in order for them to produce any fruit in their relationship, they have to have give and take. Come on, 700 kids and children church. I know y'all understand me. There has to be give and take. If he's always taking, it's going to deplete what's in her. And if she always takes, he'll lose the heart to give anymore. Any, thank y'all. Any real relationship has to have reciprocity. Say it with me. Every now and then, you got to be willing to let somebody else have. Amen. Let me show it to you in the Bible. Give me Luke 6.38. Y'all hurry. Yes, you want to see an irritating game. Watch one person with the ball. Every time they get it, shooting bricks, they could have built the Eiffel Tower out of bricks. <laughs> but they won't pass the ball. They don't want anybody else's name in the paper but theirs. But real friendship. See, that's what I love about David and Jonathan. That's why I couldn't move on because we read the verse. When David got to the, got to the palace, he was a shepherd boy. He had, you know, crud on his feet. He didn't have decent clothes. But Jonathan said, hey, I know I'm the prince, but I know that the anointing's on you. I'm going to take off my nice clothes and put them on you so that people will receive you for the anointing that I see. I don't have to be the star. Hey, David, heads up. Yeah, they didn't play ball. They didn't play ball. They went with me on heads up. Do you understand that? Look at Luke 6, 38. What it say? Give, and it shall be given unto you. What do I got to do first if I want something given? Give. What, so I can't be sitting around. How come they don't like anything? Uh-uh. What has to happen first? Give. You do yours. Amen. And it will be given unto you. Good measure, press down together. You know it, shaking together, running over. Watch this, Galatians 6, 6. I'll just tell him. He says, look, let him that preaches the word or is taught in the word communicate with the one that teaches in all good things, contributing to his support. So that says, when I pour out the word of God to you, it's your responsibility. Hey, pastor, I'm living off the word that you're preaching. Hey, I want you to have something. Oh, y'all not talking to me. You move into your house and you get all that kind of stuff and you got all your money. You swimming in money. And you, you're supposed to say, hey, Pastor, when I got here, I was cussing folk out so good until I started to write a manual on how to do it. And now I've been here for a while and God's sanctifying my life and I'm recognizing no corrupt communication. And when I come, I'm having an encounter with God. And Pastor, thank you for the vision that you got laid out. Pastor, my life has really changed. I can see me going to another level. And I just wanted you to know I appreciate Watch this. Ecclesiastes 4 9 says, Yeah, go on, turn to that. I want you to turn to that. Y'all getting anything? Amen. Yeah, you, you, you got to stop mad. You got to stop the lie of the enemy that said, Go after yours, just get yours. You can't, even be a, you can't even be a decent lover. If you only try to get yours, you're a mess, honey. You're a waste of time. Oh, no, straight up. You are a waste of energy. Be better just, just cut on golden girls. <laughs> no, because real, anything that really is impactful involves reciprocity. Oh, I'm sure. Ecclesiastes 4 9, read that for me, Doc. Two are better than one. Why? Because they have a good reward for their labor. Men have got a reward for their labor. If we work together, if we both are doing stuff, we, we get a greater, we multiply our efforts. One can chase a thousand, but two can put 10,000 to flight. If we both work together, give and take, we'll end up with more. 
one falls, man. He's by himself. He didn't have anybody to help him up. Watch this. Let me get you. I want everybody to turn to Luke 12, 48. Luke 12, 48. Man, you ought to have it in your mind. See, there's people, and I wouldn't, I hated to go here. As long as you buying lunch, they're ready to go. Oh, my God. As long as you say, I got you. I told them, they asked me, uh, we had a leadership meeting, and it made me nervous. They were asking me all these questions, and it was like an interview, and I was nervous. It was so funny. And I was, you know, what caused my friendship, and I was talking about Ma Shirley and what caused me and Ma Shirley to become space partners and just friends, just really good friends. And it was because I saw something in her. I saw her heart to give on her level. She wasn't expecting me to buy nothing. She'd go pay for home. And whenever there was any kind of holiday, she'd throw $10, $20 at the pastor. And I watched her, and I knew her, me- her means were limited, at, you know, seemed to be limited at that point. But she always had it in her heart. Even not just for me, for other folks. We would go to baby showers. She'd be sitting up there grinning. Well, not really grinning. My show just kind of... <laughs> she had that card. person would open it. They'd say, well, praise God. Reciprocity. Not looking for somebody to always hand something to you. Not one. She, she ain't give me nothing last year. I guess because she knew that's what you were gauging it by. Oh, God, that was good. All right, y'all at Luke 12, 48. I was hoping y'all would be with me more on this. That's all right. Luke 12, 48. Listen to this verse. But he that knew not and did yeah. commit things worthy, worthy of stripes, stripes. Uh-huh. shall be beaten with few stripes. Come on. For unto whomsoever much is given... Of him shall be much required. What? For unto whom, what? Much is given, then what? Even with God. When I give a lot, he said, I'm expecting a lot. Come on. He said, it's got to be what? Reciprocity. Got to be what? Yeah, he said, come on, I'm not going to just keep giving and keep giving and keep giving. People say, well, Lord, know my heart. He knows what he said. See, this is the thing. John, watch this now. And you won't always have to reciprocate on the same level at the same time. Boy, I wish I had y'all here. Y'all still here? Because you remember Jonathan is the prince. And David is the neglected son. Eighth son that was out in the field. And if you look at the relationship in the beginning, it looks like. It looks like David was the recipient of everything because Jonathan gave him shoes and gave him a bow and gave him his cloak and gave him credibility and stood up for him with his father. But David did him some favors too. David reciprocated because you saw David being willing to play music so the daddy's demons wouldn't mess with his head. Watch this. When David had a chance to kill Saul, which anybody would have told him to do, he wouldn't do it, not just because he was the king, but that's my, that's my covenant brother. That's my friend's daddy. And I know he's crazy, but I, can't, I wouldn't do that to Jonathan. And let me show you something about reciprocity. Even if you can't do it on certain levels, watch this. David, David loved Jonathan just like Jonathan loved David. And when Jonathan died. The Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 1, that David had not forgotten the concept of reciprocity. He was still trying to make an assist because he said, is there anybody left of the house of Jonathan that I can show kindness to? Jonathan's already dead and gone, but the love that he had was a giving kind of love. See, it's not love if it won't give. It's lust. And all lust ain't sexual. I've had people want to be around me because I had, a, I had an in with somebody they wanted in with. And they thought they loved me. I knew they didn't. I knew they didn't. They were lusting. Boy, this is good. It's important to realize you may not be able to give on the same level at the same time. But people can tell and you can tell when somebody got a willing heart and when they just they cheap and stingy and they just want to run you, want you to cook and fall all over and drive all everywhere. And you say, hey, can you pick me? Well, my schedule is a little tight today. If you had called me 20 minutes ago, I already set my day and I'm the kind of person soon as you say, okay, no problem, no problem. I better keep moving, Hannah. You felt it. You felt where I was going with that. All right. Let me get this last thing. 
Come here. Somebody catch. Come get a rebound. Yeah, Trev, come on. You, you the ball guy. I'm trying to miss. I don't normally miss. So I got I to gotta almost try to close my eyes or something because I just nearly just. You didn't get the rebound. That was late. Try to get it before it hit the ground. They used to make us run for that. All right. Okay. Rebound. Watch this. A rebound is when somebody misses and is captured before they lose their advantage. It's when they intended to do right and accidentally told your secret. Y'all ain't say nothing. It's when <laughs> it's when you needed them and they were too busy. Oh, I messed up. Most people are fine as long as it's going in. But when somebody just throws up something wild, this is what usually happens. Don't get it. And it just goes. And the enemy gets it. And it knocks in the stuff. And by the time you look up, the ball y'all were playing with is in the hands of the <laughs> Rebounding is about forgiveness. And you can't have any kind of lasting relationship if you don't find out how to forgive. A rebound is when you obtain the ball after a missed shot attempt. You recover it. And we all have a tendency to miss sometimes. But if you and I don't learn how to handle disappointment and the imperfection of those with whom we're in relationship with, if we don't learn how to keep something that stung us from burning us to death, then the enemy will get our ball. And the game for us will be, y'all are helping me, I feel you now. You and I have to master the skill of rebounding. You have to master the skill. I didn't mean to mess with him. Where is he gone again? I lost him. There he is. Come here. One of the things that will help you, it came from the Bible. It's something they used to tell us to do. Come here, uh. Kevin, why don't we run up here? Hurry up. In my three minutes. Now, when somebody takes a shot, Kevin is not on my team. Trev is on my team. I wanted to make sure y'all didn't did say, because if Kevin had been on my team, you'd say, all the light-skinned people got together. I know how y'all are. Please come to church next Sunday. Please come next Sunday. Is that not funny? All right. So I'm getting ready to shoot. All right. And that's right. Who, who, who hollered it out? You're supposed to do what? Box out. What Trev did, like when I get ready to shoot, you're going to get called for that hand, though, Doc. I'm going to tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But here it is again. I get ready to shoot. He boxed out. What does that mean? That's Bible. When the Bible says, go in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 through 3, in two minutes, you got to hurry. See, boxing out is where you have postured yourself with a certain degree of understanding. Y'all, boy. Okay, maybe you want to read it first. Read it in the NLT, Doc. It's on the screen for you. Read this. Watch this. Verse 1 through 3 in the New Living Translation. See, if you're going to walk in forgiveness, it's just like rebounding. It is catching the thing. I know they missed. I know it hurt. I know they stung. And you were thinking, oh, man, just not now. Not when my dad died. Not when my mom died. Not when something happened at work. But if you box out to start with. Read the verse. It says, huh? He took the mic. Boy, that is funny to me. I got, I'm not paying $100 for this. Whoever took that mic going to pay this $100 if I go over my time. 
Let, let that be known right now. I paid it last week. I ain't paying it this week. Come on. It's on the screen for you. Therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, yeah. beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. We're Christians, y'all. Come on. For you have been called by God. Keep going. Always be humble and gentle. Come on. Be patient with be each patient other. Be patient with each other. And, 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 and patient, being patient means, yes, it hurt, but I understand. And you have to give people time to, to understand what you need because people aren't mind readers. But well, they either know what they don't, and you don't always know either. Keep going. Be patient. Go back. Making allowance. Uh-uh, go back. Be patient with each other. Yeah. Making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. That's it. Right. Making allowance is boxing out. Making allowance. Look, look, look. I, I need you to be there. But I recognize that sometimes what I need you to do is, is opposite of what you feel like you need to do. Sometimes. Now, if that's all the time, guess what? Ain't no reciprocity in that. But I got to learn how to forgive. If, if, your, if your wife hurts your feelings, you don't want to go numb. You don't want to just let, I ain't saying nothing. She should have known. And just let the ball go. Because then somebody else going to end up with it. Named Cindy. Cindy going to get your ball and half of your check that the wife don't get in divorce court. If, if, if your friend hurts, he says you have to forgive. That's what God is teaching. He says you make allowances for their faults. You make every effort to keep yourself united in the spirit by binding yourself together with peace. Give me Ephesians 4.32 and I'll be done. Forgiveness. 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 And I know it hurts sometimes, man. Because you really thought sometimes, because see, here's the thing. When it's like a friend or something, and you're, you're really low, and they ain't there, tell the truth, man. That thing feel like y'all ain't going to say nothing. Come on. This, that thing feel like ain't nobody around. And, and, and sometimes it almost, I'm telling you, when a friend not there, it almost feel like God ain't even there. Oh, I thought you were real. I'm sorry. I didn't know y'all were still being. The Oscars are over. And so, so, but look what the Bible says, Ephesians 4.32 says, be kind to one another and be tenderhearted. Don't get hard-hearted. Be tenderhearted. No, Pastor, it hurts too much. You got a God that'll heal that. You don't throw your whole relationship away because they, didn't, they said the wrong thing or they told the wrong thing or, or they made a mistake or they got under pressure. I had a friend of mine that... Uh, I had shared something with, and I told him, I said, you need to be the kind of member that you want your members to be. And so we were talking, and so he was kind of on the outs with somebody. And when he got back in and I was on the out, he knows that I'm the one that told him that. But he said, as somebody, as one of my friends told me, and I heard it, and I called him just as faithfully. I said, so that's how you're going to do, Doc? I said, you're going you gonna to throw me over like that? And at first, you know, he started stuttering. I said, Doc, you know what I always say when people stutter who don't naturally stutter? They lying. <laughs> and I said, now, I love you, but you're wrong for that. Watch now, what I do? I said, you're wrong, but I didn't make it so harsh that he didn't know where to go with it. I said, come on, Doc, you're wrong for that. That's twenty dollars no, what? I don't need this $20. You know I've not what I was trying to do. I was trying to let him know I am hurt. I thought it was shady. But I'm trying to let you know it's not a relationship breaking issue. I just need you to know that it hurt my feelings. And he said, you're right. I think I got nervous. I got under pressure. My fault. And we rebounded. And we kept possession. Are you following what I'm saying? Some of y'all are hurt right now because you had friendships. And when something happened, or even a relationship, even, even deeper than that, when something happened, you did not know how to handle it. And it hurt you so bad that you didn't have these skills. 
And so instead of you being able to handle the ball and do what you needed to do, you just didn't know it. The ball hit, and you couldn't believe they missed at a time like that. And you just, this is intentional. This is intentional. You let it just fly off. Mm -mm. The Bible says, don't do that. It says, be kind to one another, be tenderhearted, forgiving one another. Watch now. He said, and this is how you can do it. Even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Where do I get the power to forgive? By remembering how much God has had to forgive me for. Where do I get where do I get the ability to let you go even though what you did hurt even though I don't understand why you did it because I know how many times I have told God I was going to do this 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 and this and then somehow the weakness of am I talking to anybody the weakness of my own flesh caused me to miss the mark And as long as I can remember how he forgave me, I ought to be able to forgive them. Watch this. Give me Doc. I ought to be able to forgive them. Catch that rebound and keep possession. It's the devil that wants to make you walk away every time there's a missed shot. But that's only going to make you lose the game. But if you box out and say, you know what? I love you and I know you're not perfect and I'm not perfect either. And I don't want you to hurt me. And when you do, I'm going to fuss. I ain't lying. But I want you to know before we even get moving, I am not going to let the devil tear up my relationships. And if we got to cry and fuss each other out and cry, I'm going to rebound the ball because I want to stay in the game. And so today, let me tell you something. If you're aware of this one verse, you probably could be better in every relationship. (laughs) That there is a friend that sticks closer than any brother. That even, the Bible said, when my mother and father forsake me, then the Lord will. Some of you all have been hurt by people that you never thought would hurt you. Some of you all have been hurt by other pastors. Some of you all have been hurt by family members, by parents, man. That's a hard one. Your children turned on you after you did everything you could think to do. But I'm telling you today, don't let the devil get the ball. Rebound that thing and grab it until God brings them home. And today, maybe there's somebody here. You don't know Jesus. You don't, listen, you didn't even know that he had boxed out and was catching your your missus. Good God, you don't hear me. Because where sin abounded, his rebounding got better. You didn't hear what I said. Where your sin and my sin abounded, he caught more balls. He rebounded better. He boxed out. He pushed the devil out of your way. And if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you need to let yourself experience the freedom of Christ. So if you're here today, here's what the devil's hoping. The devil's hoping you won't survive. The devil's hoping that you'll be so mad at who hurt you. That who wasn't there for you, at the people that failed you, that you'll be, especially if they were church folk. Oh God. The devil's hoping you'll be so angry with church people that you'll find a reason to stay away from God. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus wants to forgive you and give you real life. If there's anyone like that, say, Pastor, I never, I never made him Lord. I have been so hurt. I'm here to tell you, everybody you love is going to hurt you. They don't mean to all the time, except for one. The Bible said, faithful are the wounds of that friend. When he hurts, it's to heal.